Enzo Maresca and Chelsea Football Club have got massive decisions to make before the start of the season and I'm going to try to help them. So if you're watching Chelsea, I'm going to tell you what 26 players you should put into your squad ready for next season. Because at the moment, we have 41. Yes, let's get that straight. 41. However, before we get to that, there's two pieces of news. Volker gives a huge hint that he's interested in coming back to Chelsea. So it's about Chelsea making it happen. And more importantly, Andre Santos' future is evident now. We know what's going to happen. He's going to pre-season, but then he's going to Strasbourg. I will explain. So before we get started, you lot were requesting for this video massively. I actually got overwhelmed with the number of people caring what I think should be the squad for next year. So hit that like button. Secondly, subscribe. I listen to the community, all right? What you guys want, I provide. So let me know what else you guys are interested in for future videos, but also subscribe to the video. Let's get started. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the goalkeepers, the defenders, the midfielders, and then I'm gonna cover the strikers or the forward line. And the way I'm gonna do this is in chronological order, starting from the top all the way down. However, in the around talking about the certain positions, I'm gonna talk about Santos's future, why, why, what was announced, and then I'm gonna talk about Marcin Mocha, because that way it's integrated into the video and you guys get to understand what my thought process is and how I would have built it and what I think Enzo is going to do. However, let's start first. Look, evidently on this, based on this graphic, we've got five goalkeepers. Not all of them are going to be first choice at Chelsea. Not all of them are made to be goalkeepers at Chelsea Football Club. For me, at this moment in time, the only position that's guaranteed and confirmed is Bentinelli. Bentinelli will definitely be the third choice goalkeeper. The guy is there for vibes, purely based on vibes. Good guy in the dressing room everyone loves him if he they didn't he would have been long gone like he's super popular every time i hear anyone talk about him it's always love now we've got a little bit of a predicament if you guys didn't watch the video yesterday it's going to be linked at the end i spoke about the fact why petrovic is set to be leaving chelsea football club so what this tells me is we're going to get uh, sanchez being the number two and we're going to acquire number one the number one who i think we should go and get and if this is my squad we're building is bulker recently alex goldberg the he's basically basically an ITK, I can call him an ITK. He put out a photo of bring back Balka, right? It's a hashtag as well on Instagram. Balka liked the picture. We've heard from Balka in the past that he'd be interested in coming back. This guy is very good with his feet. He's absolutely massive, covers majority of the goal. Great shot stopper, very good goalkeeper, good experience now in the French League. He basically would come on a cheap. That would be my three goals. Zsa Selina needs to go on loan, and Burstrom needs to go and get some minutes because at this moment in time, he's just not ready for Chelsea Football Club. He's too young, inexperienced. We don't know what we're getting, and you don't gamble in the goalkeeper position. Speaking about the defense, we have got a plethora of talent. Like when I tell you I'm going to start with the right backs i think this is the easiest way one of all we've got gusto and james that's more than enough worst case scenario james gets injured or gusto gets injured we've got josh achepong coming from the youth uh play being able to play at the right back position as well as right center back that's what you need and you're going to see this is going to be a constant theme in my video right everything i say is we need to consider minutes and we also need to consider opportunities to play on a regular basis. Because if they're not going to play on a regular basis, they need to leave and go and play somewhere else because you're just ruining the asset. And in this case, James and Gusto both have had similar injury problems last year. James is worse, so they need to get rotated. Josh will get minutes in the Conference League here and there, coming off the bench, and then it's a slow integration for him, and maybe then he goes up and gets a great low. In the left-back position, we're stuck with Chilwell and Kukurea, right? I like Kukurea. I think Kukurea adds great value, and the beauty of Kukurea and James is both can, like, integrate even in between games. One can come into the midfield, and one can come into the midfield, and the other one can hold the width. Ben Chilwell, we're not getting off our books anytime soon. I don't see anybody paying 210k a week to him. I don't see him taking a, a pay decrease to go anywhere. So for me, it looks like that's our cent uh, left backs that we're stuck with. I wouldn't want to do it personally. I would sell him. However, this is what's going to happen. The back four, and this is where it's super interesting, right? We need four center halves. And we have got six or seven on the books, if I'm not mistaken, right? We've got Wesley Fofana, Tusan Adarabayo, uh, uh, Chalaba, Bashir Humphreys, Levi Colwell, Axel de Sassi, Benoit Badiashile, and that's just the ones off the top of my head, right? I can't, maybe we've got more, I'm not too sure. We can't have seven, and we can't even have five. 
playing a back four, I do not believe you can go with five. What I would do, and this is again controversial, but this is what I would do. Levi and Badi Ashile fight for the left hand side because it explains itself, right? Badi Ashile and Levi are both young players that are ready to contribute now, need minutes and consistency. Both have got great left foot, gives us the balance on the right and left hand side. Personally, Levi would be my first pick. However, a lot of people like Badi Ashile. On the right hand side, I personally would keep Trevor Chalaba and Fofana, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be Fofana, I think it'll be Trevor, and I think it'll be Tussin. What's gonna happen from there is, I don't know where the minutes are gonna come from. Because one player is gonna be fifth choice. And when you're fifth choice, what does that mean? It means you're not playing big man. But genuinely, unless Fofana gets a relapse of his injury, I don't see where Fofana, like where Tussin or Chalaba play. And this is where it gets very interesting because Chal rumors are coming out that Chalaba's got no intention of leaving. And then we got De Sassi. I don't know what's going to happen to Axel De Sassi. This is why when we signed Tussin and Rio, I was like, what are we doing? Like, I understand why people want to sign him. I understand why people wanted to have the experience. However, we already have five center halves. And like I said, Josh can play, Josh Hachikoma can play right center back as cover, and he can also do right back. So that's perfect, academy graduate, beautiful. That's the center back roles. So as I said, quick debrief, we can have James Gusto, Colwell uh, Kukurea, uh, uh, Chilwell and Kukurea, Colwell, Badia Shile, and then you'd have Fofana and Chalaba for me. However, at this moment in time, look, we got Adarabayo, so he looks like he's staying. Don't know what's gonna happen with the sassy. I'm selling it. All right, so what we need to talk about now is the midfield. And this part is very, very congested. Like I'm not exaggerating when I tell you, I think we are overpopulated in these positions because we've got Leslie Ogochuku, who's going out on loan, and I covered this at the, end, at the end of my video here. Go and click on the link, it will take you and explain to you in detail what needs to happen for Leslie Ogochuku on his loan, whether it's in the Bundesliga or the EPL, Fabrizio confirmation. However, the next one, Santos. Fabrizio is now confirmed officially, so there's no point in me including him in my squad, because I would have. At this moment in time, and this is wild, Santos is going to the US. However, straight after the US, He's going to France. And this is because Chelsea rate him really highly. Chelsea want him to be in and around Enzo Maresca, but Chelsea want him to acquire a lot of minutes. And the reason why Chelsea want this to happen is because Chelsea want to prep him to continue his development. They don't want him to miss out on football and the kid wants to play. And apparently, and this is very interesting, the kid didn't want to go back to Strasbourg as long as Patrick Vieira was there because he didn't believe that the system suited. However, Liam Rossini was on the phone, he persuaded him, he got like spoke to him and was key instrument of why the player wants to go back. So this is great news. If for Santos, for me, it's annoying because I would have preferred for Santos to stay. You don't know how highly I rate him. For me, Enzo, Caicedo, Santos, and Palmer are my favorite footballers in this team. Genuinely, I love what they offer the team. Like, I think they're very talented and like could achieve a lot of stuff in their like careers. However, it's frustrating to see um, Santos go on loan, but it is what it is. Another excuse to watch uh, uh, Strasbourg next year. Now back to Chelsea. The six, it's very, it's gonna be Enzo Fernandez, whether he gets the suspension or not, we don't know, we're gonna find that out. Or Lavia. That, that's great options, right? On the other eight, on the right-hand side, I thought it was gonna be Moises Caicedo, and the understudy would be no one else but Andre Santos, right? No, because what this means is there is an opportunity there to be had, and the opportunity will go to one of two people, in my opinion. It will go to Kellerman, the one that we acquired from Aston Villa. I know nothing about him, I just know he plays in the midfield. Or, and this is a big or, Conor Gallagher stays. And for me, I don't want that to happen because you don't know I don't rate Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher has 12 months left on his deal and I am almost certain whether he's seen his year out and then all of a sudden Con will go for free the year after or they're giving him a new deal and they're going to agree something. It is very awkward what's going to happen with his future. I don't think he's good enough for Chelsea Football Club. Just my opinion. That left hand side, it's a little bit more simple. It's going to be Drewsbury Hall and Carnage Chukameka fighting out for that left hand side of the midfield. And you know what? When you look 
look at it, considering we've got the Conference League, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and what's it called, the Club World Cup, that's a lot of bloody trophies. You know them ones, like, and the Premier League, like, bro, there's a lot of trophies in it. We're definitely gonna be set five competitions, nearly 60 games, we're gonna need everybody. So, all in all, I feel like we've got a good six there in Drewsbury Hall and Carney, uh, Caicedo, and think, I'm hoping it's Kellerman, Enzo, and Lavi. Personally, if you put in Santons instead of Kellerman, I would have been going, oi, that midfield, on smoke. Genuinely, I would have been like, we've got a bad boy midfield. Like, options, left, right, and center. However, it's not happening, we move on. And the final part, the attack. Okay, so the attack is very interesting because we can take this in position by position or we can talk about them as a collective. Personally, I want to talk about it position by position. The right wing picks it. Right, we have Diego Moreira, we've got Angelo, we've got uh, Noni, and we've got Cole Palm. Very simple, very easy. It's Noni and Cole. Angelo did not do enough, in my opinion, to warrant staying. Diego Moreira did not do enough in the under 20 EPL2 when he did play. Unfortunately, he's going to have to find himself a move. They're going to have to sell him. There's going to be a way that they're going to sell him. And we've already made back the money that we most probably got by signing him because we loaned him to Leon. They paid us. And then he came back. He's been playing in the EPL2, but at the moment, he's just clogging up the road. Like, he needs to go and play somewhere. Angelo. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm really excited to see what preseason holds for him because we'll actually get to see whether he fits Maresca's system or not. That's gonna be super exciting. On the left-hand side, this is where it gets very, very interesting. Because for me, there are three options. Tariq George, uh, Mikhailo Mudrik, and Sterling. Don't sign any. Unless Mudrik or Sterling are leaving, don't sign anybody. I'm dead serious, do not. We don't need to congest it anymore. And then, the reason I say this is because you've got Christopher Nkunku who can go into the left-hand side. You've got Nicholas Jackson who can go into the left-hand side. And that's your two number nines. The backup for them is David Washington or Mark Gill. I know they persuaded Gill to come because, oh, you're gonna have first-team opportunity. What first-team opportunities, bruv? Like, what first-team opportunities? He's not better than Nicholas Jackson, nor is he better than Christopher Nkunku. So, for me, one of David or Mark Yu are gonna have to hold that bench. They're not gonna be in squads, they're gonna be frustrated, they're gonna be left isolated, and it's frustrating, you know, like, cause this squad is too congested. This is why I said, we need to cut this squad down. If I was building a squad, genuinely, I would have two right backs, one, one left back, and then one left back from the youth academy that will support. You have to have four center halves, I'd have five midfielders that can play all four, all three positions, and I'd have five forwards that can play all five positions, and then have the youth team support. Because I believe bloating a squad isn't beneficial for anybody. All it does is create problems. Players need to play out through bad form. And that's just my personal opinion, it always has been. The reason why Noni slapped at the end of last year was because when he played bad, Poch kept on playing him, and then he started playing well. Mudrik as well. Mudrik started playing well, then he would go bad, playing well, and they're young. This is what you're gonna expect. Same with Nicholas Jackson, and guess what? Jackson ended up with 14 league goals, or 15, whatever it was. But it is what it is. Guys, I hope you lot enjoyed this video. Go and watch the video that I did yesterday. I think you guys will like it. It really covers good topics in detail, why we're getting a new goalkeeper, why Leslie Ogochuku is going on loan, and more importantly, what is going on with Romelu Lukaku's future. Go and check that out, and let me know your thoughts. Peace out, I'm out. Have a lovely day.